In this video, I'll be boosting the power of an old solar array by extending the frame and adding more panels. Stay tuned, and I'll show you how it's done. Hey, I'm Trevor Makes, and I took on this project to refurbish a 17-year-old solar array that's only producing around 80% of the power as when it was brand new. The solar panels will eventually need to be replaced, but for now, we just decided to make up the deficit in power by adding an extra row of cheap used panels of the same make and model. But in order to do that, we'll first need to extend the original frame to be able to support the new panels. This solar array had been installed by a previous owner, and they chose to have the frame built with a standardized hardware system called Strut Channel, which looks like this. There was plenty of clearance to extend the frame at the bottom, so my plan was to bolt on extra lengths of strut channel using these standard four-hole straight brackets. The extensions needed to be at least the width of one panel, plus the gap in between, which I measured to 33 and a half inches. But because these struts have bolt holes spaced out every two inches, I rounded the extension length up to 34 inches to keep the cuts in between the bolt holes. Each panel is supported by two struts, so I needed 12 extensions in total for the new row of six panels. The old panel mounting hardware needed to be removed to bolt on the strut extensions. But I won't be putting up the new panels just yet, so I'll put the hardware back in place for now. Now before moving on, I need to back up a bit and talk about the mounting hardware that attaches the panels to the frame. This piece here is called an end clamp, since it supports the top and bottom edges of a column of panels fixed to a pair of struts. When two or more panels are stacked together, there's another piece of hardware called a mid clamp, which looks like this, that's used for support between panels. The way that the clamps are attached to the frame is with these spring nuts that slip inside the strut and are rotated in place until the in-turn strut edges line up with the grooves in the nut. The spring helps hold the nut in place during assembly, but ultimately the hardware bolted onto the nut is what locks it firmly in place. Because I'm adding a whole new row of bottom panels, I'll be moving the old end clamps to the new bottom edge and I'll need to add 12 new mid clamps between the old panels and the new panels. Now that the panels are up, I need to explain how the wiring needed to be modified to accommodate the greater number of panels. When wiring several solar panels together, an important consideration is how many panels will be strung together in series, and how many of those strings will be tied together in parallel. The way it works is that panels connected in series with the same current sum their voltages together. On the other hand, panels or strings with the same total voltage connected in parallel sum their currents together. Either way, the total power produced will be about the same, but because higher currents require thicker wire to minimize power loss, it's common to have longer strings with fewer of them in parallel. The way my panels were originally connected was in two strings of 12 panels each, with the series connections following these S-shaped patterns, and their positive and negative connections tied together in parallel at a junction box attached to the frame. Each panel has a maximum open circuit voltage of 43 volts, so the strings of 12 added together made at most 516 volts, well below the maximum input voltage of 600 allowed by the solar inverter. However, if I just added the six new panels to the same arrangement, increasing each string to 15 panels, it would bring the total open circuit voltage up to 645 volts which is unfortunately greater than what the inverter is rated to handle. So I decided to instead split the 30 panels into three strings of 10 panels each, 
bringing the total open circuit voltage down to 380 volts. To minimize the work that needed to be done, my plan was to remove the connections here and here, to join the middle two columns here to make the third string, to run new wires here and here to replace the cut links from the original two strings, and finally the six new panels can be added to the three strings like so. I didn't actually record myself working on the wiring since I ended up doing it all at night. That way I was able to avoid dealing with high voltage wires and plus it didn't interfere with the daytime solar production. But I have collected data for the months before and after hooking up the new panels, just to make sure that everything was working as expected. There have unfortunately been a lot of cloudy and rainy days, particularly in the last month, which you can see from all the dips in the data. But if we compare just the sunny days with the highest power production, we can see that we had an increase from around 17.5 kilowatt hours up to 22 kilowatt hours. This is a 25% increase in power, which is exactly what we would expect given that the total number of panels had also been increased by 25%. So I'd say this project was pretty successful. Now, I hope you found this information useful, but please don't try this at home without first consulting an electrician because high voltages can be dangerous and may cause damage to equipment, life, and limb. And I'm just a YouTuber, so don't take my word for it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.